Greetings out there in YouTube land. This is Morris Man, and as always, I thank you guys for coming to my channel. Today I'm going to do a brief video, and it's entitled, Things That Might Help You Become a Good Guitar Player. From time to time, I'm going to put together these small videos when I think about things that might help you guys out there that's trying to get started with becoming a good musician. And I put together a quick little list, and I'm going to go through the list and explain why these things are important. And the first one is, of course, very obvious, practice. Uh, the more you practice, and this is regarding anything in life, the better you become. I can remember when I first started playing guitar, my biggest problem that I had with myself was, I can't get to a song without messing up. And you know, after like a year or so, I even forgot about that about that thought because I, I played and played and played to the point where I made a point that, uh, you know, I tried to make a spotless or air effortless or errorless performance. So I can't say, you know, enough about number one as far as just practicing. Because I know, unfortunately now, we live in an era where it's quick, fast, and a hurry. You know, I thank God I grew up in the era that I did for many reasons. And one of them was the fact that back then people want to actually learn how to play an instrument. You know, the majority of us young guys in the neighborhood back then was either doing one or two things, doing two, did both of these things, playing softball, chasing women, and trying to become a musician. You know, and uh, you, wouldn't, you couldn't go down, uh, you know, three, four blocks without hearing a group of guys in their parents' garage playing, you know. Unfortunately, now that's just almost an, uh, non-existent in the young black community that you get a group of black guys playing. And it's not their fault. It's because of the, the technology and the demands on the, of the record companies that they're not trying to sign, quote-unquote, a band anymore, a black band. They're trying to uh, uh, hire or put under contract one guy, and then they get two other guys to put the whole album together. So it's unfortunate that uh, R&B music has really decayed to that, to that point. But getting uh, forward, moving forward to number two, working on playing bass and understanding other instruments. Because uh, I've had a couple of students that I, I, I stressed to them, I said, once you kind of get comfortable with guitar, buy yourself a bass. Why? I really don't want to play bass. Here's the reason why. Once you have learned more or less the theory behind an instrument, you could take that inf information and transfer it over to another instrument. The only thing you got to do now is just work on the dexterity of the other instrument, the physical aspect, but the concept of music, chords, sharps and flats, all that stuff transfers over. And it's not that difficult to switch over to bass when you're playing guitar because it's a string instrument. Now you're just dealing with four big strings instead of six small ones. But you know, I have some people that really don't want to do it, and I told them the benefits of it because uh, once you learn how to play bass, and I'm not saying you know you need to become a Lewis Johnson or Victor Wooten, just you know decent enough that you can play and you know what you're doing on bass. And the reason why it's so important because the majority of the stuff that I learned as far as the chord placements and, and the songs, I learned it through the bass notes. I mean, I listen to the bass note, the root note. And then I can determine, because that's kind of the, the, the pattern or the system, listen to the root bass note, and then you run or audition these chords. If the bass player is hitting a G note, you know, on that particular point in the song, so you, your, your job is uh, to locate, it's going to either be a G major, G minus 7, G7, G major 7, then maybe one or two others. Audition those chords around that note, and I guarantee you that you're going to find that particular chord that corresponds with that bass note. So that's why, you know, I try to stress to people that uh, it's good to pick up other instruments because not only it makes you a better uh, musician on your instrument, it also helps you learn how to write music, you know, for other instruments. Because I play, you know, several different instruments, guitar, bass, drums, keyboards. I start off actually as a trumpet player. And actually I was a pretty decent trumpet player, but I got tired of blowing and got a headache. So I was like, maybe this ain't for me. So I kind of switched over. But as a result of that, I can sit down by myself and write lyrics, write for the piano, write for the drums, write for the guitar, you know, write string arrangements. So it's really important to, you know, not become tunnel vision or just, I'm just a guitar player. And that's all I'm going to do. Because uh, if you expand your horizons, you can become a really pretty good producer and songwriter. And you know, people ask me, what do I think of myself as first? And strangely enough, actually, it's a songwriter. You know, my musical skills come secondary because that's why I've made a great deal of, of, of my money and my living from writing songs. 
and, you know, secondary for playing for other people and touring with them. You know, so it's good to kind of, you know, expand your horizons when it comes to different instrumentation. Okay, number three, stick to one guitar program and, and try to learn it. You know, it's, there is an exception. If you're, you're working on something that's not going to make you a good guitar player, yeah, by all means, abandon it. But unfortunately, majority of the people these days, they get sucked into these programs of marketing. They, you can become a good guitar player in 90 days, like losing the weight and becoming, you know, six-pack six pack ab nonsense. Uh, you know, those are just fly-by-night programs, and they're not going to yield the results you're looking for. So once you do find one, stick with it and just keep playing and keep practicing. You'll get better. Number four, don't expect to become a good player in a very short period of time. It kind of just ties into what I was just saying as far as uh, it's going to take time, you know, and uh, you got to put your effort and dedication into it because the more you play, the better you become. Because, I mean, like I said, back in the era that I grew up in, everybody was really serious about trying to become a good musician. And I spent countless amount of days in the summertime upstairs in my mother's house. It's like... 80 degrees outside, it's about 150 degrees upstairs, and I'm just playing. Just playing, practicing, playing, and practicing, playing, practicing. And as a result of that, I became a pretty pretty decent guitar player and, and, and multi musicianist because here's another interesting fact. The majority of the professional musicians play more than one instrument. You know, I mean, here's the example. Paul McCartney, you know, you usually see him strapped with a bass, but he plays guitar, he plays piano, he plays drums. Prince, you know, plays everything. Uh, Ray Parker Jr., you know, good guitar player, great bass player, great keyboard player, drummer. You know, so the list goes on, and again, it goes back to uh, number two, you know, understanding other instruments and, and becoming pretty decent on them. Not trying to master them, but just uh, decent enough to play or write for those other instruments. Number five, hang around other dedicated young musicians in your neighborhood and stay away from the toxic people. Uh, again, the era that I grew up in, the majority of us, you know, like t out of 10 guys, there was seven of those guys trying to play. You know, they were trying to put together bands, and they were pretty serious about trying to become decent musicians. And, and the, the, the statement at, at the end of, the, of that one is where about where it says toxic people. Stay away from those people because sometimes we don't realize we have people around us that are dragging us down. And some of them are deliberately trying to do it, and some of them have no idea that they're doing that. And i give you a good example. And this is a personal story. I grew up with about four different, four guys. They were like my brothers. These guys, you know, we started in grammar school and we became good friends. And, you know, uh, to this day, two of those people are still in my life. And unfortunately, some of those other people aren't because I remember the day that we had this, you know, part. You know, uh, I got older, you know, I had a good job. I was married, had a baby on the way. So every, every year, I would get together with these childhood friends and take them out to dinner for their birthday. And this particular evening, we went, had dinner, then they wanted to go have a drink or two. I'm like, fine, you know, I don't drink, but, you know, I could sit and have an orange juice or cranberry. So on our way there, and, and we are in our late 20s at this point, they sticking their head out the window, hollering at young girls. I'm like, man, what's going on here? What's, what's up with that? Are you being the square? I'm like, no. We're grown men now. You know, we're not 17 or 18 horny little dudes. And, and, you know, we need to act like grown men. Or you just think you're better than us. At that point, I realized that those people were no longer uh, beneficial to my life. And I had to cut them loose because they became toxic. You know, so I'm like, you know, I can't follow your path. And you're not trying to follow my path. So it's time to say goodbye. And it's unfortunate because sometimes you have to do that. You know, so that's why I put in, you know, stay away from toxic people. Okay. Number seven, I'm almost done. Rhythm players get more money and get more gigs than lead players. I was told a long time ago when I was starting to play, uh, if you focus on your rhythm, because you, you got a pretty, right, pretty good right hand, I can see that right now. So I can imagine in five years, you know, you're going to be even better. And they said that it might be beneficial to you to lean more towards rhythm because, plain and simple, rhythm guitar players get more gigs than lead guitar players because in most songs, especially in that era, there was always going to be a rhythm guitar player. Well, he's playing the chords or just doing lead lines, but not soloing. Versus the lead guitar player where maybe on the entire album of an artist, he might have one or two solos on that album. That's it. 
you know, unless you lied to your brothers, where they cut Ernie loose every song. It became kind of un redundant. Because, I mean, you know, I'm a huge Ernie Isley fan, but I really don't want to hear a solo in every song. It's like musicals. When I was a kid, I hated them because every two seconds, they break it in the song and sing it. I'm like, oh, my goodness. And that's kind of how I feel about, uh, you know, lead soloing. You know, you use it sparingly. You don't use it every song, you know, that you're recording on. You know, because, again, it becomes redundant. But that's my opinion. Okay, and actually I can expound on that and maybe in another video I will. But I'm about to wrap this up. Number eight, focus on the Pacific style of music and try to become in that style. There's nothing wrong with playing other styles, secondary, but for the most part, if you are trying to become a fun guitar player, focus on that. And still, I spend 50% time on this, 50% of the time on another style of music that I won't really benefit or profit off of. So, you know, it's best to kind of stick to one Pacific style because unfortunately in the music industry, they don't let you have an album where you got a funk song, a country and western song, a rap song all in one album because you, 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 they're trying to find your audience niche. And once they do, they focus in on that. But I see that my time is about to run out on my camera. So until next time, this is Morris Man signing off and thanks for watching.